Let's round off our Thursday with live picks. Olivia Rodrigo, an actress and singer whose singles have been topping the charts. Her debut solo, Driver's License, shot to number one on the US Billboard chart and also was a big hit in Singapore. And she's only 18 years old. Our music correspondent, Edino Abdul Hadi, spoke with Olivia recently and he's here to discuss why she has become such a pop sensation. Dino, Olivia's songs are fueled by the confusion and drama that comes with the messy business of relationships and teenage life. Now, she's definitely not the first teenager to include these elements in her songs. Now, we are talking about Taylor Swift, Lord, and Billie Eilish. So, what sets her songs apart from the rest? And do you see her having a long and successful career in this music industry? You know what, you're right. She's definitely not the first. I mean, since pop music uh, came out what, in the 50s and all that, there'll always be teenagers singing about heartbreak. But um, I think the thing to, to note is that a large chunk of pop music listeners are teenagers, right? And uh, for a lot of them right now, who are teenagers right now, uh, a pop singer like Olivia is a peer. You know, she's, she's of the same age. Uh, you mentioned Taylor Swift. We got to remember that Taylor Swift is now 31. <laughs> Amazing as it seems that she's so someone uh, Olivia's for Olivia's peers. She's she's someone older, and you mentioned Lord as well. Lord is twenty four, so she's kind of like closer to millennials than Gen Z. But Olivia is seventeen when she wrote the song. She's eighteen. So for a lot of um, pop music listeners, what teenagers right teenagers right now, they identify more with uh, someone like Olivia right now, and. Um, Billie Eilish is a little bit different. She's she's only one year old, older than Olivia, uh, but she's a little bit different in the sense that she's a little bit edgier. You know, she's a bit more alternative. I would say Olivia Rodrigo comes from a more traditional pop mold. Well, she she first became famous as a Disney actress, right? And uh, so she already had that mainstream acceptance uh, before she put out her solo music. And whether she's going to have a long and successful career in the music industry. I think so. I think so. You know what? What impressed me most about uh, when her album Sour came out was the range of her musicality. You know, Driver's License when it came out, it was a this emo piano ballet, uh, a ballad. Sorry, and then the next single that came out, Deja Vu, had this really interesting like drums, which uh, I thought sets it apart from other pop songs. And then when she put out her third single, Good for You. Uh, it had this very rocking pop punk sound from the early to mid 2000s, like a la bands like Param Paramore and all that. And I think during the Zoom conference, uh, when she was talking to the press, I think she talked about how uh, she takes in multiple genres. You know that that she listens to a wide variety of music, um, and she also hints that that she's already tired. She's already tired of the stuff that she's been listening to, the singer songs and stuff, and that right now she's heavily into hip hop. So I think that kind of uh, curiosity, having an open mind, uh, it's a good sign for an artist. What for a young artist like her? And it, and I think that uh, she will be more than a, a one album wonder. Right now, her songs definitely have caught on because. Driver's License is the soundtrack of to millions of videos on TikTok. Do you know what are your thoughts on TikTok and social media playing an increasingly vital role for a singer's success? Again, I think that every generation has a platform that they call their own. You know, uh, maybe during my time, last time it was CDs. Uh, you know, for some generation it's vinyls, for some people it's like the radio and all that. And like it or not, TikTok is that platform right now that is being used by um, a lot of younger people who are also into pop music. Uh, I mean, people are getting a lot of things from, from TikTok videos, you know. They, they get a lot of laughs, obviously, there's a lot of things, to, a lot of funny stuff in there. Uh, there's a lot of tutorial videos that they're getting their knowledge from there. And the fact that the videos have soundtracks means that if you're watching TikTok videos, you're also absorbing, you're getting your, your fix of music on TikTok. And I think the great thing about social media, especially TikTok, is that you don't have to be already famous, you know, to put out content. Um, anyone can put up, any singer can put up snippets on their own songs uh, online. And if it's catchy enough, 
You know, if it, if it fits a mood, and it can go viral, and you know, and, and a lot of people will be using it for their videos. Uh, it's not perfect, of course. I think one of my my beefs with with TikTok, like music on TikTok, is that because of the short nature of most of the videos, I think there's concern that uh, songwriters or singers or artists might focus on you know that that short hook, that 15 seconds or whatever of catchy music. Instead of you know uh, getting listeners committed to an entire length of song with an intro, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, everything solo, a lot, a lot of it is right now is that short catchy bit that, that everyone is going for. Well, thank you for joining us today. Do you know you can find his interview with Olivia Rodrigo on StraightsTimes.com, or if you're watching us on YouTube, there's a link in the description below. Zombie Junkies, well, good news for you because Season 2 of Black Summer will be out on Netflix on June 17th. And film correspondent John Louis is here for a quick review. John, Black Summer flew under the radar for me. Now, I haven't seen it or even heard of it until today. What's your take on the series? Okay, now the big uh, news item was that Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, which is a big budget, zombie movie came out but it was pretty much a cartoon nothing mattered you know whether people lived whether people died it didn't matter and the zombies didn't behave in a very zombie like way black summer flew under everyone's radar like you said but it's such an amazing film sorry series it's a eight episode series yeah every episode is staged like a different genre of film that's what i i like about it it's the same cast of survivors but in each episode you know one might be a heist movie they steal weapons one might be a castaway movie they're all stuck in a in a shop or in a in a store and they have to get out but they're surrounded by zombies and another one they face evil kids like a supernatural horror story so every episode is different and and exciting you're right, John. You mentioned that Zack Snyder's uh, Army of the Dead, a uh, big budget zombie movie, was lackluster. So, how does this series compare with uh, that movie? Yeah, as with too many of Zack Snyder's films, it doesn't matter if things don't make sense. Like, it doesn't matter if this is impossible in real life. As long as it looks cool, he'll put it in the movie. There are a couple of consequences because of this. It means that nothing really matters. Uh, whether people live, whether people die. And, you know, then it becomes a cartoon. But the problem is, is that he treats it like it does matter. So he'll have something to make you care about the characters, like having a little kid in a movie or what. So the stakes are raised. So he doesn't want you to care, but then he makes everything look like a cartoon. Black Summer, things matter because cars work like real cars, doors work like real doors, fences work like real fences. So, you know, things, things have stakes. Thank you very much, John. The second season of Black Summer drops on June 17th and the first season is, of course, already on Netflix. Now, dining in at restaurants, well, still not allowed for hopefully just 10 more days, but food correspondent Wong Ayok is here to tell us the best food that can survive the trip from the E3 to your home. Welcome, Ayok. Now, Ayok, your picks today are from the Coconut Club as well as, as Chef Sham, which sells vinegar trotters, fish, more pig, stomach, chicken soup. Now, what makes the food from these two places ideal for takeaway? Okay, yeah, I've been doing a lot of uh, food delivery this few weeks because there's no dining in. And after, yeah, uh, while I learned that some dishes actually do very well for delivery and some dishes don't work at all. So for these two stalls, like uh, Chef Sham, he does a soup and a stew. And soups and stews are really very good for delivery because even if it arrives to your place cold, it's very easy to heat up. You either do it in the microwave oven or you do it on the stove. I mean, it's just like a no-brainer to heat up a soup, right? As long as you don't boil it too much, you just use medium 
medium to low heat and you know, it will taste exactly the same as when you eat it at the store. And for nasi lemak, uh, it's another thing because nasi lemak is usually sold at around room temperature. Only the rice is warm. The dishes are usually like laid out. So you don't need to eat it piping hot. So by the time it, it reaches your home, as long as the rice is still warm, it, it still works. It, it's really no different from eating at a restaurant. So uh, that's why I picked these two dishes. Right. Now, I've had nasi lemak at Coconut Club, but I still want to know your recommendations, Ayo. Uh, what would you recommend from Coconut Club and of course uh, from Chef Sham? Okay, Coconut Club, the signature dish is the nasi lemak. But uh, for the nasi lemak, actually, there are different main dishes that you can choose from. You can just have an ota or you can kambo. But uh, they have recently launched this new uh, dish called French Poulet Chicken Leg. It's, it's basically an organic chicken leg that they deep fry and then they toss it in some dry spices. Uh, it, it's really good because uh, it's not overly spicy and yet there's enough kick in it. And the chicken is still moist, not too dry. And uh, Coconut Club also has some side dishes which I really like. Uh, recently I tried this uh, Tao Tempe with Samba Blado. Uh, what I like about it is that sambal balado is a little bit more acidic than the normal uh, local sambal because they put tomatoes in it. So uh, it just makes it a little bit more appetizing, uh, which is why I like it a lot. And yeah, and for Chef Sham, uh, yeah, they are the two signature dishes that you have to order. Uh, there is the soup, the fish maw, pig stomach, chicken soup. Uh, it's, it's a very classic Cantonese soup uh, and Chef Cham really spends like hours brewing this soup. It's, it's very thick, it's almost milky uh, and when you drink it, yeah, it's really robust. You can you can actually taste the collagen in it. And the uh, pork fritter is another uh, very well done dish. It's cooked with vinegar. Uh, but the vinegar is not too sour and not too sweet because there are some stores that, yeah, if it's too sour, you, you can't really drink it. And if it's too sweet, they are, all you taste is sugar. But as Chef Sham, they balance it really well. So uh, you can actually drink the soup on its own. You don't even need to eat it with rice. Thank you so much, Ayo. And that was our food correspondent, Wong Ayo, with his recommendations. Now, be sure to check out his Tapao Nation column every Monday and Wednesday as part of Life's Stay Home Guide.